Hey guys, this is Scott. Uh, hey, uh, got such a good response on it this uh, from last week. Thank you for the kind words. Um, uh, I was very, very humbled. Thank you very much. Uh, please keep sending in questions and comments because I read them all. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and pray and let's get into this uh, so we can get some questions done, okay? Father, thank you for this time together. We ask that your Holy Spirit give us the words to say and the words to hear and to guide us. It's in your Son's holy name, Jesus Christ, we pray and ask these things. Amen. Okay, I, last week we I was asked and answered four questions. Uh, I'm going to keep this video short, so that's why I'm going quickly. So therefore, I don't take up much of your time. And I, and each week, I'll, I'll add more of the questions. As they come in, I'll add them, and I'll answer all of them eventually. Uh, I'll do it, I'm going to try to do it twice a week. Um, and then plus the Wednesday night study, on which we're on Daniel right now. And I'm planning on probably going into Revelation. I don't know yet. We'll see about that. Uh, I've got some other other studies that are in, in mind, and I'll just see if that's the way it lines up. Okay, this week, uh, oh, if you're asking a question, and it's kind of in the same vein as one of the other questions we've asked, uh, that have been asked in the past, I'll address it. If there's something different in the information that needs to be answered, then I'll, I'll do it. It's, it's real simple. Okay, this question says, does the Bible talk about, does the Bible talk about if Russia attacks Israel? This, okay, yes, it does. Uh, in Ezekiel 38 and 39, if uh, in Ezekiel 38 and 39 it talks about how the how Gog, G O G, which is the leader of Magog, which is Russia, it says Gog, Magog, uh, Rosh, and Tubal. That is the goes from Russia, the mainland, all the way to the to their coast, their sea coast. So therefore, it's very clear the king of the north, that would be Russia. Um, then it also talks about Persia, which is Iran. Then it talks about Turkey. Those are the three main uh, people that come together in a coalition, according to Ezekiel. Then it also in involves Libya, uh, which Libya, Cush, uh, which would be Ethiopia, a part of Ethiopia, and Sudan, mainly Sudan. So those two are in there. So you've got Libya, Sudan, Ethiopia, Turkey, Iran, Russia, and then, of course, the final one that's in is Syria. And they are actually in Syria right now. The, uh, they're 30-something miles off the, off the northern coast of Israel on her, on her northern border. Now, in Ezekiel 30 and 39, it talks about how they will attack. God's going to put a hook in their mouth and draw them in. That would be, I think, financial and you know, the money and the power and the uh, from Russia and I think the other coalitions will be for their hatred of Israel. They're all, the other countries are Muslim uh, and they hate the Jewish people. Okay, so therefore God t says in Ezekiel that he's going to kill five out of six of them in the mountains of Israel, in the northern mountains of Israel, and then they'll be buried in Israel. Okay. He said he's going to do it with hailstones and, and floods and natural disasters. This is not the first time he's done this. Uh, he did this with the uh, Amalekites. Uh, he did this when, when uh, Israel was chasing uh, their enemies, and God killed almost all of their, of their enemies with hailstones. And he said the ones that weren't killed with hailstones were, died by the sword. Okay, he said, but more were killed by natural disaster than there were by the sword. <clears throat> so God... He did that. And not only is Russia and them going to be uh, hammered and killed by uh, natural disaster, but also we're told that natural disaster is going to occur in different places. Okay? So I hope that answered the question uh, to your satisfaction. Uh, let me see. Ooh. Is the USA written about or spoke? Is the USA spoken of in the Bible? Not that we know of. Uh, kind of a question is the USA is the strongest, richest, most powerful nation that's ever existed. Now we know that in the tribute, the seven year tribulation, the Antichrist will have a coalition of a military that's stronger than anyone that's ever existed. And his opposition will be also uh, stronger than anything that we've ever seen. How do we explain that? 
Well, either A, enough people are raptured out of the United States where it collapses and it's no longer a factor, and and then we're absorbed, the, the United States is absorbed into the one world order, which is already in process with this new administration who are being outwardly spoken, trying to get us to fight civil war, uh, is very openly new world order. New world order and one world government are synonymous. So either the United States is uh, just absorbed, which that's my belief. I can't, can't show it scripture. I don't see it. Or where something happens to us and it, it, the Bible doesn't say, okay? Right now we're made so weak that it, that seems to come in line with, uh, like for instance, right now we are on October October 2nd. So the, the, the thing is, the, what would make sense is they're trying to weaken our country enough like getting rid of our oil reserves and uh, strategic oil reserves. So therefore we're dependent on other people. They're making, they're making this up. So therefore that we'll fight each other. Well, the Antichrist, when he comes in, doesn't come in as a warrior. He comes in as a peacemaker. Well, in order to make peace, we all gotta be fighting each other. Then he comes in and makes peace and everybody lets him take control. So I hope that answer, that gave you more information than, than I was planning on giving. But if you need some more information, be more specific on the next. If you have a, a part of something you would like to hear, hey, just, just send it to me and I'll, I'll add it on the next one. Uh, does the tribulation start directly after the rapture? Does the, yeah, does the tribulation start directly after the rapture? Here's my answer. Okay, what starts the tribulation? Again, if you'll go into the study on Pray5, that's P-R-A-Y, the number 5.org, uh, and type in tribulation, rapture, it'll, it'll come up. And there'll be more than one study. The uh, thing is, there. According to Daniel 9, 27, 500 years before Christ came to earth, he talks about how the, the lawless one, that's the Antichrist, will sign a peace agreement or a covenant with the many. Not just a peace, a peace agreement with from one, like Saudi Arabia signed one with Israel and we signed one with Israel. No, the many. The context is overall. And he's, and it's, gonna be a one, it's gonna be one person for all the many. It's gonna be one, one individual doing all the work and doing all the having all the power to do so. So uh, what it says in Daniel, it says that when the pen pits paper, how do we know this? Because in Daniel, just a few verses up, it talks about how uh, when Nehemiah and Ezra are, well, were told, will be told to rebuild, when the, when the king tells to rebuild, when the order goes out to rebuild the temple and Jerusalem, which it went out, it said from that day forward, 483 years in the future, the Messiah would show up. That's why. That's how we know Jesus has already shown up. Okay, that's one of the reasons. There's 354 more other prophecies on that as well. But the context is, is when he's speaking, Daniel 9, 24 through 27, it's Israel, 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 okay? Jerusalem specifically and the temple. So he says when the order goes forward, that's when, it hap that's when you start the time clock. Same context in the same vein on Hebrews 9.27 says when the man of lawlessness or the man of uh, destruction, if you're reading one version, like you'll have a different version from the NIV to the, New, to the King James Version, but it's the same, same. It says he's going to make a, a week for a uh, covenant for one week, which is seven, which is seven years. Um, the, um, the, uh, He's going to cut it off in the middle, stop stop uh, offerings and sacrifices in the middle. This is the Antichrist. As soon as he puts pen to paper, that's when the seven year starts. That's when the time clock starts. So you can have the rapture. It can be days, weeks, months, even years after the rapture before the tribulation officially starts. Oh, if you need more information on that, just let me know and I'll answer it on the next one. Okay. Um, and after the tribulation, after the tribulation, then what? <laughs> okay, after the tribulation, then what? That's a good question. Uh, I hope I answer this one uh, to your satisfaction. If not, please, again, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, give more. Does the tribulation start? No, after the tribulation, then what? Pretty, okay, pretty straight to the point. 
Well, we have, let me do, go in chronological order. We have the rapture, then this, when the signing of the peace agreement. We have this, then we have the seven-year tribulation, which is broke up into two, three and a half year parts. You have uh, 1260 days or 42 months. It's referred to both ways. We have a lot of stuff happening during the tribulation. At the end of the tribulation, we have where Messiah, Jesus Christ, steps foot down on the Mount of Olives. That's in Zechariah chapter 14. It talks about his, where he put his feet, which is on the Mount of Olives, is where it's the same place where he ascended. Then it says it'll be in the evening, so they will know the hour. And it says that will he says it will be in the warm season. And also in Daniel, it gives us the exact day. Okay, that, and no one's going to know on this side of the, of the of the rapture when the when the Messiah will come back for the second. The rapture is not the second coming. Christ doesn't actually come down and put foot on earth at the end of the seven year tribulation. According to Zechariah fourteen, he sets foot down on the Mount of Olives and actually comes in to rule and reign for a thousand years. At that time, the it says the the armies that are in the Valley of Megiddo. There's going to be hundreds of millions of troops there. Uh, it, it could be, you know, three, four hundred million troops there. There's a lot of actors in this game. So it says he's going to kill them. And then he's going to come in and set up a thousand year reign sitting on the throne of David. Okay, that will happen. And it says that the Antichrist and the false prophet will be thrown into the lake of fire at that time. And they'll be the first two occupants of that uh, that place and they're not destroyed they're just there to suffer for a thousand years sooner than anybody else on the planet how do we know because at the end of the thousand years when it says he tosses everybody else off into the lake of fire it says they are there and they're still alive so therefore you're not destroyed when you go when you go into the lake of fire so thousand year or seven year tribulation Christ comes back sets up a thousand year reign which we will come down and rule and reign with him according to what revelation says in one place, and it says at the end, it'll, it'll lock up Satan and his angels and everyone else who took the mark of the beast will be locked up. The two, uh, the false prophet and the uh, Antichrist will be thrown directly into the lake of fire. Then at the end of the thousand years, it says, then Satan, singular, will be loosed for a short time. And in that time, he will start up, uh, get enough people without, you know, a great number of people to encircle the city of God. That will be Jerusalem. Okay. That means that someone can't say, well, the devil made me do it because the demons and Satan aren't here. So there's no more demon possession. There's no, uh, when you do seances and Ouija boards and all that, no one shows up. Okay. So that means the evil, that he proves the point that the man left alone to our own devices are evil in our own hearts. When someone says, well, I'm a good person. Well, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> and he proves it. For the entire thousand years, people can make their own decision without the influence of demonics. So at the end of that thousand years, he'll be loosed. He'll get a whole bunch of people to follow him by the millions. They'll encircle the Israel, or Jerusalem specifically, the city of God. And then he says, it's over. And then he goes and he grabs them, judges them. That's when the judgment of the unbelievers are. So the sea and Hades and death all give up their, their dead. They're judged and they're thrown into a lake of fire. Then God destroys and re, or he says, he recreates a new heavens and a new earth. And then uh, then we those of us that are saved get to, get to uh, live for eternity on with a new heavens and a new earth. Okay, that's going to be the questions for today. I'll, I'll, uh, three or four more days from now, I'll try to get two a week. But I'm going to keep this under 15 minutes, and it's right now. It's right at 14, so let's go ahead and pray out. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your blessings, your mercy, and your grace. May you show us the way and give us wisdom and discernment this week to spread the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Remember this one thing. If you don't know who Jesus is, who he's God and our Savior, nothing else matters. Keep that in mind. See you in a few days.